August 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job, chapters 12 through 14 of the Old Testament. Then Job answered, Without a doubt you are the people, and wisdom will die with you. I also have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things as these? I am a laughing stock to my friends. I, who called on God and whom he answered, a righteous and blameless man is a laughing stock. For calamity there is derision, according to the ideas of the fortunate, a fate for those whose feet slip. But the tents of robbers are peaceful, and those who provoke God are confident, who carry their God in their hands. But now ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds of the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea declare to you, which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in whose hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all the human race? Does not the ear test words as the tongue tastes food? Is not wisdom found among the age? Does not long life bring understanding? With God are wisdom and power, counsel and understanding are his. If he tears down, it cannot be rebuilt. If he imprisons a person, there is no escape. If he holds back the waters, then they dry up. If he releases them, they destroy the land. With him are strength and prudence. Both the one who goes astray and the one who misleads are his. He leads counselors away stripped and makes judges into fools. He loosens the bonds of kings and binds a loincloth around their waist. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows the potentates. He deprives the trusted advisors of speech and takes away the discernment of elders. He pours contempt on noblemen and disarms the powerful. He reveals the deep things of darkness and brings deep shadows into the light. He makes nations great and destroys them. He extends the boundaries of nations and disperses them. He deprives the leaders of the earth of their understanding. He makes them wander in a trackless desert waste. They grope about in darkness without light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Indeed, my eyes have seen all this. My ears have heard and understood it. What you know, I know also. I am not inferior to you. But I wish to speak to the Almighty. I desire to argue my case with God. But you, however, are inventors of lies. All of you are worthless physicians. If only you would keep completely silent, for you that would be wisdom. Listen now to my argument and be attentive to my lips' contentions. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you show him partiality? Will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if he would examine you? Or as one deceives a man, would you deceive him? He would certainly rebuke you if you secretly showed partiality. Would not his splendor terrify you and the fear he inspires fall on you? Your maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Refrain from talking with me so that I may speak, then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in peril and take my life in my hands? Even if he slays me, I will hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. Moreover, this will become my deliverance, for no godless person would come before him. Listen carefully to my words. Let your ears be attentive to my explanation. See now, I have prepared my case. I know that I am right. Who will contend with me? If anyone can, I will be silent and die. Only in two things spare me, O God, and then I will not hide from your face. Remove your hand far from me, and stop making me afraid with your terror. Then call, and I will answer, or I will speak, and you respond to me. How many are my iniquities and sins? Show me my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and regard me as your enemy? Do you wish to torment a windblown leaf and chase after dry chaff? For you write down bitter things against me and cause me to inherit the sins of my youth. And you put my feet in the stocks and you watch all my movements. You put marks on the soles of my feet. So I waste away like something rotten, like a garment eaten by moss. Man, born of woman, lives but a few days and they are all full of trouble. He grows up like a flower and then withers away. He flees like a shadow and does not remain. Do you fix your eye on such a one? 
And do you bring me before you for judgment? Who can make a clean thing come from an unclean? No one. Since man's days are determined, the number of his months is under your control. You have set his limit, and he cannot pass it. Look away from him and let him desist until he fulfills his time like a hired man. But there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Although its roots may grow old in the ground and its stump begins to die in the soil, at the scent of water it will flourish and put forth shoots like a new plant. But man dies and is powerless. He expires, and where is he? As water disappears from the sea or a river drains away and dries up, so man lies down and does not rise. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake nor arise from their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol and conceal me till your anger has passed. Oh, that you would set me a time and then remember me. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait until my release comes. You will call and I, I, I will answer you. You will long for the creature you have made. Surely now you count my steps, then you would not mark my sin. My offenses would be sealed up in a bag. You would cover over my sin. But as a mountain falls away and crumbles, and as a rock will be removed from its place, as water wears away stones and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy man's hope. You overpower him once for all, and he departs. You change his appearance and send him away. If his sons are honored, he does not know it. If they are brought low, he does not see it. Only his flesh has pain for himself, and he mourns for himself. God, this is one of my favorite sections of the book of Job, where he's talking about you and nature. But now ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds of the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea declare to you which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in whose hand is the life of every creature and the breadth of all the human race. God, we only need to look around us to have constant reminders of your grace and your mercy and your beautifulness that you created this entire world for us to exist in while we did what you put us here for, which is to glorify you. I look at a flower and how perfectly it is created, the symmetricalness of it, how it reaches down into the earth for the water, how the bee that you also made takes care of the pollination part of it. It's just this amazing system and this is just for one little tiny, tiny flower that's out in front of my house. And Job goes on to talk about even like these gigantic trees that if somebody were to chop them down, that that whole process of life starts happening all over again. And God, we only need to look at the stars at nighttime and the wonderness of a sunset and the beautifulness of some of the majestic mountains that are here on earth or the gorgeous seas that you have surrounded my house with. How can anyone look at those things and not just kneel down before you and praise you for how amazing you are and all that you've created for us. I don't think we stop in and recognize that you could have created a very one-dimensional type looking world where maybe everything is the same color, that we exist or live in something that's, that's like four walls and that's it. <laughs> That there's, that there's nothing in the, in the night sky, there's nothing around us, there's just land, brown land for all to see. But that wouldn't be you, God. Because your gloriousness is in the fact that you have created so many beautiful things here on earth. The creatures here on earth, the sunrises we see, the amazingness of the, of the planets that we can pick out of the sky. It even humors me the fact that you created over 3,500 different types of mosquitoes in this world. I have no use for mosquitoes, but you obviously did. 
and you have a purpose for them in your plan for this earth that we currently exist in. God, when, when that same part of nature is talked about in Romans, it is one of my favorite passages in, in the Bible. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so they are without excuse. And I think about how we exist in this amazing beautiful world and and we have no excuse but to praise you constantly and to worship you constantly for creating all this amazingness around us yes of course but more importantly for the fact that it reflects your glory just like we do or should it acknowledges that yes there is a creator and yes he so lovingly took care of all of these minute details even the details of 3,500 different types of mosquitoes. He took care of everything. How the planets stay in orbit and don't crash into each other. How our bodies are able to exist more than 10 minutes on their own as a functioning work of art, a masterpiece, as you have called them, God. That acknowledgement that there is a creator that is reflected in nature as Job talks about and should be reflected in us. And furthermore, if you are going to be that focused on this world and that focused on creating all this amazing nature around us and more importantly, focus on creating us as human beings that can actually communicate with you and have relationships with you, how in the world could we possibly think that you couldn't take care of everything about us? That you would want what is best for us at all given times and that you are the provider of all those good things. God, I know specifically Job's not talking about giving up control per se. Maybe arrogance to his friends, but not control as much. But God, I just pray today that we give up everything to you. That we just allow you to to come into our lives and take over and allow our lives to be filled with joy even through the pain even through the storms but filled with joy that we have a creator that loves us that much that even his true facets are reflected in the little tiny flower that's sitting outside my house right now god i truly love you not as much as you love me, because I will never understand that, but I truly love you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.